This video is sponsored by Brookwell's Parts and Accessories. Okay, hello, welcome back to the LR TV. This is my uh, young son, Eugene, and he's saying hello. He's done really well today. I um, give him a, a Hero Award for learning to use the micrometer in about five minutes, along with the dial gauge, and I'm very, very impressed he picked this up straight away. Um, he does get extra maths lessons uh, from school, so he's got a little bit of an advantage here. His uh, mathematical brain is pretty good. And uh, what I'm going to do here is explain the dial gauge here, the DTI. Basically, each one of these increments is one hundredth of a millimetre. Okay, so that goes 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. That's 0.1 of a mil. And each one of these is one mil increment. So one complete revolution of the needle around the dial. Okay, um, that will be one millimeter. And then we can go around again. Now that's two millimeters. Okay, you can see that. Three millimeters. Now that's actually quite big for this. This is to measure small movements. You can see the stylus here pushes in, pushes the needle around. Uh, it's not a biggie. This is also a lock as well, stops it going past zero. Okay, and this one here stops the uh, dial from moving. This one you can zero it in once you've set your gauge up. Okay, and uh, there's nothing special about these. All you have to do is know how to set them up and then read them. I've done plenty of videos before. Um, dial gauge is one of the things you use uh, with Land Rover Engineering. Uh, basically, measuring the run out, this would be the same as doing brake discs. What we're trying to do here, okay, you can see the stylus is actually preloaded. Now, I don't have to pay attention to millimeters. I'm looking for hundredths of a millimeter, okay, so that'll be from the region of 0, uh, 0, 0 to 0. Point whatever, 1, 0. And uh, yeah, basically, when you set it up and you've preloaded it, you want to get it to zero. And uh, like with a run out, is to find the lowest point. Once you've found that, set it again to zero and then run it until you find uh, how many hundredths of a millimeter actually moves. Now, uh, the whole thing on here was actually about 0 0.05 of a millimeter, which is uh, next to nothing. However, um, what you'll find is that will make a difference depending on what it says in the workshop manual. Okay, so you can see how that's moving. There's, there's hardly any movement in there at all, but it does make a difference on precision engineered parts. To put it in some sort of perspective, this is 0 0.05 of a mil. I just knocked over, never mind. I'll just find the uh, feeler gauge equivalent of. It's uh, 0 0.05 of a millimeter, okay? 0.1 of a millimeter is one tenth of a mil. So anyway, look, you can see that 0 0.05 of a mil, very thin. And so is this, one tenth of a millimeter, or 0 0.1 of a mil as we say. This is one millimeter, it's a lot more substantial. Okay, so that is actually one complete revolution. Okay, so uh, if you can understand that, the run out is uh, 0 0.5, maximum is 0 0.1. Okay, so there isn't actually much in it, but it makes a hell of a difference with uh, machinery and stuff that needs to go around at high speed. Bog standard type of dial gauge DTI stand is generally magnetic and you have to mess about with it to set it up to get it right. But it's possible you have to sometimes use your uh, practical imagination to get the stylus to um, mate with the uh, surface at 90 degrees. So basic number 56, okay, this says rotate the differential and check the total indicated run out on the crown wheel back face. This must not exceed 0 0.05 of a mil. Now this here is the uh, Salisbury axle. Um, this is demonstrated in one of the old uh, 9110 uh, manuals. And what we have here is a Salisbury axle. Eugene's gone about setting up the DTI and uh, he's now going to check this for me. And this was actually um, 0 0.05. It was just within tolerance. Surprisingly, there's not much run-out clearance allowed with the, this crown wheel compared to the Discovery or the 90s. Um, it's a heavier duty, 
And basically, there's a lot more setting up to do in these than there is in uh, the other diffs that we're showing at the moment. So, um, yeah, basically, we're just running on the edge of the crown wheel here. And it, that goes up to 0 0.05 of a millimeter, which is f uh, five hundredths of a millimeter. OK, yeah. So uh, on the uh, 90 uh, or the 110 front diff, this should actually the crown wheel run out is a lot more generous at 0 0.10 of a millimeter. That's 0 0.1 of a mil. OK. And uh, yeah, well, we'll set it up here, and this is well within tolerance. Basically, with these, what you do is you run round the uh, crown wheel, okay, until you found the, find the lowest point where the needle drops below zero, and then you'll zero it in, run it round again until you see the highest point. Now he's got the lowest point here, and then he's got a zero it in, which can be a bit of a pain. Um, you can see that that's set on zero. And then now he's just going to uh, check the complete run out. This diff is one that we haven't stripped yet. This is a fresh one that we've got. I quickly cleaned it this morning. We did lose the sound on here, so unfortunately you won't hear Eugene today. He will be starring in more of these videos as he gets to learn more stuff. And basically, yeah, okay, he's he's got the uh, reading off that and he's now got to record it. Okay, so if uh, one tenth of a millimeter is uh, maximum permittable, um, we're just writing this here. It's actually a 0 0.05 uh, of a, a mil. Okay, 0 0.05 mil run out, which is acceptable. Okay, the the less run out, the better. Obviously, if it fails that, then we've got to investigate. But at this point, we don't have to. He's happy. He's learned something. That's good. Yeah. Well done, Eugene. That's uh, one thing that you've got under your belt now. OK, in a workshop manual, you'll find that you'll have some figures and it will mention uh, Salisbury axle, a pre-rationalised axle and rationalised axle. This is in relation to a height setting block. What the idea is, is that you put your dull gauge on the top of the pinion head and then it should come to the bottom of where the carrier bearing is. Now, these figures... These are actually very, very, very important that we get these just right. And uh, the only way to do this is to actually have a setting block. And this uh, re regarding uh, later axles will be the same thing. Are you lucky guys in America that have got older manuals? You can read the inches. There will be a point where we're going to have to convert inches or thousandths of an inch uh, into millimeters. But we'll get around to that shortly. I'm um, just going to tell you that you have to know how to use a dial gauge so you can set the pinion height. Just be warned. Later uh, workshop manuals, this is a D2 one, will give you LRT 510187. Uh, it's a DTI and uh, basically we still have to be able to set the height uh, using a block. One thing that I've got here is the DTI stand which is supposed to be magnetic it isn't anymore it's quite an old tool and that was for holding the DTI now we can as a solution you could possibly get a diff with the pinion height already set this is a nominal height which is zero and we've set the height to zero on here so if we were going to make a comparison between uh, two pinion heights um, we could possibly do it this way if you had two diffs and you didn't have to disturb this pinion. So basically we take a, um, once the DTI has been set, we can then measure between this point and the top of the head. And now if the dull gauge says it's different, then we have to then reshim. So basically what you would do is set your dull gauge first of all on a height block. And then you would go and put it onto the pinion head and uh, the housing here, the lowest part of where the bearing would sit. And then any difference from that means that you have to adjust the pinion height. It gets more complicated than that as well, but I, that's what I'm explaining to you. And I will do a video just dedicated to that because this is the hardest thing about setting a diff up. Anything else is easy. Now, um, crown wheel backlash and... Uh, Data manual, this is for the Salisbury axle again, is at 0 0.15 to 0 0.27 of a millimeter. All right, so the backlash is basically just the free play where the uh, uh, pinion 
is between the teeth of the uh, crown wheel, okay, which is not much movement. You can visually see this. Going back to the Salisbury axle, and I'll give you the data on that, okay, Eugene is now going to check the backlash. He's put the uh, preloaded um, dull gauge onto the tooth, and he's just moving it gently backwards and forwards so he can hear it clunk, and then he'll get a reading. And to be honest with you, he did say it was one, uh, 0.12, which is okay, that's not a problem. Like I said, we lost the uh, sound on the camera here. Yeah, okay, so we go on to the um, dis uh, Discovery. Um, I think this was a Discovery one. Yeah, this was a Discovery diff. And we're just checking the backlash on this. And I showed you in, an, in a, a recent video. That's quite easy to do. Okay, we're just checking this so we know where we're at because if it's spanked and it's got massive uh, backlashes teeth missing stuff like that then we'll just check the diff away but it's good to check um before you uh go ahead and strip and yeah he's got that that didn't take him very long to learn if he can learn it you can learn it if you already know then all the all the better really okay so the micrometer so you can see down there underneath the linear, it says 0 0.01 of a millimeter, which is one hundredth of a millimeter. You can get these micrometers at 0 0.001, which is one thousandth of a millimeter increments. So anyway, what I'll do is leave a link below this video so you can uh, go and check this video out and it will explain the micrometers, micrometer set and uh, how the increments work, which would be a lot better than for me to try and to explain in this video because the video is actually getting quite long now. My dad's measurements are very incorrect apart from mine. Okay. Yeah, fair that enough. That means I'm way better than him. <laughs> so you should be. So you should be. Uh, yeah, actually he is right. He's completely correct. We've rechecked the measurements. That means uh, young Eugene down there, he uh, has passed almost with flying colours and dad has to recheck his measurements every time. So anyway, uh, yeah, he's actually right. I did uh, mess up. So uh, micrometers, uh, quite easy to use. Eugene learned to use this one in uh, five minutes. He measured, re-measured the shims for me, and I was out on every single measurement. So he's corrected them. And what he's got for this shim here, which I had uh, put 0.5 of a mil extra, he'd actually got it at 2.35 of a millimeter, or round about there. You can see that. Yeah, so my fault, put my hands up, I got it wrong. Um, anyway, measuring tools for shims, for instance, you could use Avernia calibers, a digital one's probably the easiest, and this will measure to uh, 0 0.05 of a millimeter, okay. Not too bad if you can read them, they can be a bit awkward. Micrometer, and uh, yeah, they're probably the uh, the best way to measure small things. This one was a cheap one from Screwfix, 13 quid. Uh, this kit here cost me about 100 and something pounds, and I have a lot more micrometers in them. And uh, 0 to uh, 25 mil. Uh, it looks roughly the same, and we're going to do a test on this to see how good... Um, cheap micrometers are. One thing you should always, always do is to zero your micrometer in every single time you use it. You pick it up, zero it in, check it, and then measure. Anyway, right, so we'll start, and uh, what we're going to do is zero both of these in. So we're set at zero, and uh, we use the thimble to, uh, to ratchet it up, so it's got the even pressure on it, and we've got the same here. Okay, so these are both set at zero. Um, point being here is that if you're not at zero, it goes out straight away, you get the wrong readings. Right, so we're gonna measure this shim, which uh, Eugene measured at 1.85 mil. And I'll uh, use the uh, cheap screw fix one, first of all. And then I'll show you what measurement we've actually got. Okay, so I'll try and get it in focus with the camera. So that's uh, 1.5 plus 0 0.35, okay, so that's 1.85 of a millimeter. Okay, that's uh, 0 0.01 of a mil difference. Okay, that's a hundredth of a mil difference. Now I'll do it with this micrometer, the same shim, okay, which should be uh, 
0.5. Okay, so you can see that the micrometers are as as near as damn it the same. Okay, for small shim measurements, I don't see why you should have to go out and buy a really expensive micrometer. However, if you're doing very, very serious work, then uh, you should really get the most expensive you possibly can. Um, but in this case, cheap and cheerful is probably actually that. Okay, so you can see it's exactly the same. Not an issue. However, this uh, screw fix one was checked by a calibration company and, said, and they basically said that it can't be calibrated. I would imagine they've tested that and it's uh, had inaccuracies as the uh, sizes have got larger. I don't know. Okay, well here's a tip, and I've had to do this myself, just to recalibrate my head and my eyes. I've got some feeler gauges here, and just for an example, one millimeter uh, feeler gauge. I'm going to measure this to see exactly where one mil is on the uh, micrometer, because as I said, I've got it, uh, some of the shims that are mil out measure them. Anyway, look, you can see that's 1.02 of a mil. And the feeler gauge isn't exactly accurate compared to the uh, micrometer. But there you go. Just as practice, if you uh, are new to micrometers, get some feeler gauges and just keep measuring so you get the feel of your micrometer. 